Okay. Um, good morning and welcome to uh, the session. Let's pray and uh, begin with today's class. I want to request one of us to go ahead and lead in prayer, please. Okay, Nina, could you please lead in prayer? Father God, we thank you and we bless you for this day, Lord. Father, we submit ourselves unto your loving hands, Lord. Lord, whatever you are teaching, help us to understand and use it in our lives, Father. We submit each one of us unto your loving hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Uh, so we have been looking at the steps as far as deliverance is concerned when we are ministering deliverance to someone and we went over general things such as um, speak to the person know that you know the person is different from the spirit that uh, we are addressing then we also said that we need not engage in conversations with the demon spirits that we can focus more on the actual work of the deliverance now today, we will look at a 10-step model which was developed by um, Pablo Botari. Pablo Botari is a person who was involved in the deliverance ministry of Carlos Anacondia in Argentina. And he has the experience in those tents, people would be brought for deliverance. And he has witnessed about 30,000 uh, deliverances after which he came up with these 10 steps. So based on his practical experience, uh, he has developed the, these 10 steps. And they are quite effective, is, is what um, you know people say. And they're very helpful when it comes to ministering deliverance. So we will look at these uh, steps right now. So some presuppositions before we get into actual steps. One is what we said earlier. We are going to minister to the person, the demon, even pastor, but you know, we stick to the person, we can, uh, you know, um, ensure that the person is fine through what you are doing. Then we try to keep our focus on the authority, right? Effectively, demonstrating the authority of God in this situation, authority over the devil, rather than uh, establishing a, a, like a struggle or a wrestle with the demon. Because we can fight all we want, we can um, have a lot of drama if we want, but at the end of the day, if God's authority has not set that person free, if the authority, the believer's authority that I carry has not set the person free, then what is the point of all the time spent? So the focus is our authority and not the uh, the wrestle or the struggle with the demonic spirits. Then counseling uh, is also important sometimes. I have mentioned that if the person is alert and has some understanding, getting their will involved will help a lot in evicting the demon spirit. So try speaking to them, uh, try uh, you know checking with them what's happening. Uh, and remember, we said you could check with them if there were any dedication, sacrifices, different things that have put them in bondage to these demon spirits. Um, and also, when they are convinced and they go against these demonic spirits, it's a lot easier to break the bondages. So counseling is helpful. Help the person see and walk in the truth. The next thing is open doors or entry points. As I have just stated, we can be aware of those things. And the moment you close those doors, and many times you have to do it in prayer together with that person. Both of you together, you have to lead that person in prayer and they shut those open doors. Then it becomes easy for the demons to actually come out. And uh, finally, we should not expect dramatic manifestations on deliverance every time. So I remember this one question 
uh, this was a few batches before you all. Uh, there was uh, somebody, she was checking with me that in our churches today, you know, we don't see people screaming, falling on the floor, uh, and shrieking. So is deliverance really taking place, ma'am? Or is it only taking place in you know some churches where we see all this happen? The answer is, we may every deliverance may not have a manifestation. Yes, when we study about Jesus, the examples there, many of them, nearly all of them had a manifestation. They fell, they screamed. Okay, But today, what is happening, could be happening, is that people are getting free um, without manifestations. So, for example, you know, people come to church, right? Sunday after Sunday, they come, they listen to the word of God, they worship God, they make commitments to God from their hearts. Bondages are broken in their lives. Maybe there are attached demon spirits to their habits or their thinking patterns. But whether we realize it or not, they are becoming freer and freer. Hopefully, if they're responding to the word, if they're responding to the presence of God, that person can completely transform over a period of time. But you never saw a manifestation of the demons leaving them. You understood? So that is also a reality. We shouldn't push for, we can't say that, oh, deliverance is not taking place only in our churches because nobody's screaming, shouting. That's not true. You don't need a dramatic manifestation to prove that demons have left. Sometimes, quietly, demons can be leaving. And over a period of time, you would notice that, right? In the life change of a particular individual. So that is also true. So we must keep that in mind. Now, even while ministering deliverance to a person, we may not see a manifestation. But uh, as long as we are working with the Spirit of God and we sense that huh, it's done, uh, then it's done. Okay, so what are these 10 steps? Let's look at them. All right, uh, we'll just go over the 10 steps and then I will explain it uh, to us. So the first one is give the individual priority. So we are ministering to the person. That is why. Second is if a spirit manifests, bring it under submission in the name of Jesus. The third one is establish and maintain communication with the individual. The fourth is ask the individual what he or she wants to be free from and try to make sure he or she really wants to get free. Make sure the individual understands to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. Six, interview the individual to identify root causes and entry points. Seven, lead the individual in closing these doors to the admission of spirits. Eight, when all doors are closed, cast out the unclean spirit or spirits. Nine, lead the individual in a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Ten, have the individual ask the Holy Spirit to fill him or her. So this is what a normal or let's say the average things would be to do while we are ministering deliverance. So all of us can follow this. Recently, just last week, we had uh, weekend school, right? Uh, so even there, like somebody was interested, you know, they felt that, oh, why don't you pray for deliverance for me? And uh, uh, so I prayed. I followed, I followed these steps. It was very helpful. And I kept talking to that person. So I began to pray. I took authority over the demon spirit. I commanded, you know, the demon spirit to leave because they felt that, okay, some, some things are there, some manifestation, like, you know, some issues are there, which they were very clear because of uh, a certain background that it's demonic. So when I started praying, uh, I followed these steps. And then I was asking the person, I was constantly talking to the person. I said, how are you feeling? What is happening now? What is happening now? So she was telling me, I can feel a burning. It's starting from inside. It's coming up. So uh, I, I prayed some more. And I was like, OK, now tell me what's happening. What's happening? She's like, the burning, it was moving. It came up to her throat. right? And then, so I know what's happening. The demon spirit is leaving. 
because we are commanding it to leave. So there was no dramatic manifestation or anything like that. But it, after a while, uh, we prayed about certain things, this and that. And then when I, even I sensed that she was fine. And I asked her, what do you feel now? How, how do you sense uh, things now? And she said, it's different. I don't feel that burden, that heaviness anymore. I feel like something has left me. Okay, So just an example I'm giving you. We may have to pray for deliverance for anyone, anywhere. Don't expect it to always look like a big, uh, you know, like a, a drama. I mean, I, I don't mean to put down the way it happens generally, uh, but it may not happen like that. Be mentally prepared to pray. Just keep it simple. Use these steps and pray for the people. Now, um, does do we always need to go all 10 steps? Okay, not necessarily. Um, it may not work in this format. That's OK. This is just to help us, isn't it? So this is just to be a guide for us. And there is no formula. There's no formula. For example, when we read about Paul and uh, his ministry, through handkerchiefs, deliverances took place. Demon spirits left. That's not there in this list. So it can happen anyway. We may sense, I have to anoint with oil. Demon spirit will leave. Or sometimes what people do, they take some water and they sprinkle. right? So there is no set formula. Nobody can give us a formula. And even if we have prayed for people many times, every ministry is different. So the key is, listen to the Holy Spirit. right? And uh, what is God saying now? What should I do now? Be led as per that instruction. OK? Maybe, maybe you sense, OK, lay your hands on that person or anything. So just go by that. There is no formula. These steps are just a general guideline. Now let's get into it. First is give the individual priority. OK, give the individual priority. So as I have already stated, talk to them, be loving towards them. Uh, otherwise, they also feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are militant against the demon spirits, but the person should not feel rejected and condemned. Well, just because they are afflicted by the demon spirit, we shouldn't look down on them that, hey, look at you, you know, you're demon afflicted or demon possessed. So we can be loving to the person and be very encouraging to the person while we say, look, um, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, just keep talking to me. Uh, we'll pray together. You'll be free. Encourage them. When I pray, we, let's believe God that you are going to be free. From time to time, I will command some demon spirits to come out of you. I may be firm in my tone, but you know it's just against the demons. It's not uh, regarding you. So just help me here. So this way, when you establish a communication, then uh, it will be helpful. And don't scare the person. You know, I'm going to pray for you. You're, you will fall on the floor. You will scream. That person will be like, I don't want this. Just leave me alone. <laughs> you know, I'm fine as I am. So when you emphasize the power of the demon, anything can happen. And all, they'll be like, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of this. Keep it very simple. Keep it very encouraging. Just talk to the person like, you know, you care for them. And that way, uh, you're giving priority to the person. They'll also cooperate with us when we are uh, praying for them. OK. And sometimes people can be very discouraged because maybe they went to different pastors and men and women of God, but the demon didn't come out. So when they come to us also, they'll be like, ha, huh, you also try. Let's see you know, if anything is going to happen or not. So sometimes people, because they carry that attitude, also the demon won't leave. Because they're already thinking it's not going to leave. You know what I mean? So uh, when we are encouraging, when we build faith in them, only then 
we can expect that all our other steps can be effective. So uh, establishing communication with the person is very helpful. OK, try doing that. So that is the first step. Next, if a spirit manifests, bring it under submission in the name of Jesus. So we have already said, Jesus commanded the demon spirit, be quiet. Sometimes these demon spirits, their tactic is intimidation. When they can make you scared, they know that they can stop you from exercising your authority. So uh, I've shared already, you know, they may come up with many different things like, oh, uh, I know about you uh, or I know your family, I will hurt them or something. They'll, they'll just bring up all these things. Just keep your focus on Jesus. And you can repeat the command. I command you to be quiet a couple of times. Because once you bring the demon spirit under subjection, the person also will be safe. Because what these demon spirits try to do is, if you don't quieten them down, there can be like hurt, self-harm for that person. I remember one lady, we were praying for her. As a team, we were praying for her. She was so violent. I think two or three of us had to literally hold her up. And even after we were holding her, she was moving so, uh, you know, in such a crazy speed. She hit her hand against uh, the floor or wall. I don't know what it was, but it, it, uh, it, it almost looked like her finger was cut. You know, you could see a deep cut on, on the finger. And we had to, because of what was going on, we had to hold her. Otherwise, she'll get hurt. Isn't it? So when we learn to take authority and we say, like, OK, you demon spirit, stop. We command them. Don't talk. Don't harm this person. To some extent, you know, there's a, there's a control. And then we can go further with um, issuing commands to the person. So yeah, we may have to command often and tell them to submit. OK? And try not to stir up the spirit. Last class itself, I said, uh, sometimes people start arguing with the spirit. They start challenging the spirit. So what are we doing? See, we need some calmness to go further. But if you're stirring up the demon spirit, then there'll be more confusion. These are all unnecessary things. What is our goal? Here is a person, they are oppressed. We want to set them free. If spirit is manifesting, whichever way, you take authority repeatedly. I take authority. I command you, be quiet. Be quiet. Submit in the name of Jesus. You command it to come under subjection first. OK? Repeatedly, you can do that. You can pray some more. You can declare, Jesus has already defeated you, you demon. Like You can take up scriptures. Uh, and if they say things back to you, stuff like, um, or oh, you are a sinner. I say, no, all the things that are against me, it's already been nailed to the cross 2,000 years ago. So speak truth. Keep speaking truth. So what are you doing? You're bringing that spirit under subjection and saying, Not, nothing doing. <laughs> Here is the truth. Jesus has conquered you. You have to leave. That's all. So you're demonstrating your full authority. Keep speaking the truth of God. Bring the demon under subjection. That is your second step. Third is establish and maintain communication right, with the individual. So what happens, I, I told us, in between, like yes, I told you, right? This week when I was uh, praying for this lady, I kept asking her, what's happening, feeling? And she was telling me. So that's also giving me some guidance. She doesn't know, uh, oh, this, is, this burning is moving. She has no idea. I have an idea what is happening. You know what I mean? So that way, you can ask or you can affirm. Don't be scared. You'll be fine. Uh, you'll be OK. You will be set free. You know, Put your faith in Jesus. Uh, Jesus commanded and the demons came out. So you're building faith in the person. Keep talking to the person. Maintain communication. Um, OK. Sometimes, when we are speaking to the person, uh, you may notice that 
like we should also be able to discern that it's not the person speaking but it is the demon speaking so that also we need some discernment over there and in some cases what demon spirits will do is they will try to make them like weak you know the person's head will fall they won't be able to communicate with us and all but you encourage them you say hey come on be alert listen to me i'm talking to you okay try to keep them alert because um that will help if their mind is involved it really helps okay so do your best but the demon spirits will try to um bring them down and sometimes some preachers say this i don't know like when you look at their eyes also you can tell like whether it's a demon or whether it's the person uh so try to maintain eye contact because then you know what is happening right if they close their eyes if they fall you say no 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 come on wake up sit i'm praying for you listen to me cooperate with me do you want to be free or not encourage them so that way okay moving forward are you all okay okay uh, uh fine four step four now while communicating with the person ask them their will because sometimes people are not willing to let go of the demons then you pray your whole family prays your whole church prays the whole gang prays it won't happen because the person is willing to keep the demon right so step 4 is also very important you ask them do you want to be free what are the things that are going on do you want to break free from all this they need to be convinced so when they are convinced right uh it is helpful these bondages will break and you know they can uh, actually come out of it so i'm not getting into it because i think we've spoken enough you all know about open doors and you know shutting those open doors pray together with them revoke dedications revoke if any sacrifices were made uh, you, you need to speak with like pray with them and you lead them in prayer so they would say something like um, uh yes a dedication happened so you'll say okay pray with me um in the name of jesus i so and so i revoke this dedication which my grandfather made um, you know the, my grandfather dedicated me to such and such a god i revoke it in the name of jesus i belong to jesus my mind belongs to jesus my body belongs to jesus you know so they say all this so what are they doing they are opposing the demon spirit then it becomes easy okay so try doing that if you're ministering to them you're talking to them but then when you sense that their will is not there yet get it in order okay then continue then continue then the next thing to do is to um ask them if they are not a believer then you ask them see when you are born again when you believe in the lord jesus christ these demons have no place in you would you like to accept jesus into your life okay now if they are already a believer that's another story it's you know open doors all that we have to deal with those things but if they are not a believer remember in matthew 12 we saw how the demon comes out it goes and comes back with seven other wicked spirits and when the home is empty it occupies so how about we help them put their faith in jesus then they are born again right the home is clean at least in that instance if we can help them um usually maybe a little later on also we can do that in the post ministry time we can pray with them ask them are they going to any church are they connected with any good pastor if not connect them because it's very important we'll see post ministry care is very important whenever we do deliverance after the demon leaves it's not over you have to make sure that the believer is now connected in a place where the word can be filled into them uh, the spirit work of the spirit continues in them otherwise it's actually dangerous because you you told them only half the truth they are free but they still need that guidance and strengthening okay uh, so in post ministry care i'll talk about it but over there you can also lead them in a prayer for baptism in the holy spirit remember i told you about that lady we were holding her and then she cut her finger and all that 
So after the demon left her, we went and prayed with her. It was so simple. We prayed with, we asked her, she was already a believer. Then we asked her, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? She said, no. It was so simple. I, I still remember. We told her, just lay, open your hands like this. And I think one of us, we just kept our hands. We be baptized in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God just filled her. She started speaking in tongues. Just a moment ago, she was uh, possessed by demons. But, you know, a moment later, she's filled with the Holy Spirit. All this is very important. Once we minister, deliverance. Because the person has to continue in freedom from the demon spirit. So the fifth one is make sure they understand uh, to make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. Because when they do that, they're, what happens? They are translated into the kingdom of God. They are removed from the kingdom of darkness. Right? So then they can experience deliverance uh, lifelong. So that is the next step. Now, at this step, let's imagine. They say, uh, no, I don't want. Or step three, they, step four, they say, no, I don't want. I'm fine. Don't pray for me. What should we do? Hmm? Threaten them, huh? <laughs> or leave them. Yeah, we can't help it. We have to leave them. <laughs> Aren't in the same punch or what? No, no, no. No violence. Uh, all spiritual violence against the devil, that's all. So, yeah, if they're not willing, you say, okay, we'll... Huh? Yeah, so we'll have to say, fine. Yes, Nina? Yeah. Sometimes evil spirit will talk through them, no? Like, uh, I don't want... Sometimes it not, may not yeah. be them, no? Yeah, correct. So that's why uh, in the initial stage, we are taking authority, no? We'll take, we'll bind the spirit, all its activities, its manifestation. So hopefully, it will be the will of the person that you're trying to understand later. So yeah, it's very unfortunate, but uh, if they don't listen, then what to do? We have to tell them, okay, it's fine. We can try, but we can try counseling. So you let them go. On another occasion, uh, ask them, come meet me. Just talk to them, counsel them. See, this is going on. How long do you want to? But you have freedom. Freedom is available for you. So counsel them till they are convinced. Right. So that way, step four and five uh, are very important before we go any further. All right. OK. Uh, so now let's imagine they are convinced. Yes. Huh. See, if uh, I told you that one scenario in which uh, they, they've lost their mind, isn't it? Either they are insane or they are something like unconscious. Sometimes you find that people are in that state. They just cannot think. In that state, I can take full authority because that person cannot think only. But if the person can think and they are unwilling, you can't do it. No, that's what I'm saying. You, you can bring the mighty preacher and pray for them, the demon will not come out. Because they want to keep the demon. You know what I mean? So it's all about agreement. Same in the life of a believer. If I agree with Satan, then things he can influence me. But if there's no agreement, only then we can break that. Is that all right? Anything? OK, fine. So we've understood that. Now. I think one part I missed telling you, when there is a manifestation, right? We said that the demons may speak. They may, um, you know, s give different suggestions. Then we are saying, no, be quiet in Jesus' name, be quiet. 
even at that point distinguishing between the person and the demon is little tricky sometimes the demons love to distract they'll say things like i'm so thirsty i want water okay we have to understand is it the demon is it the person sometimes these demons will make all kinds of demands they'll say oh i want to eat non veg you know i want to do this don't get into it like oh really okay swiggy <laughs> don't do that because it's the demon asking you so just like you take it under subjection and you say stop all this okay because we are trying to get the demon out but it it will distract us somewhere we may think the person needs it a person is asking for food they are asking for ice cream they are asking for all this but actually no <laughs> demons do this they distract you uh so that point i missed but you know you can just be alert about these matters okay so now let us imagine that the person has accepted christ into their lives what is the next step sixth one is it's like an interview okay interview is just ask and get answers to your questions so you you say something like um, what happened what's happening from when is it happening so then you're trying to connect oh okay this person they are not able to sleep it's been 2 years um when did it start it started when they went to you know a particular place of worship uh, what did you do there um you know, somebody tied a thread on my hand so you're trying to figure out what what is happening why is it happening when did it start so that we call an interview because that will give you some understanding of what you should pray against isn't it so we can do that we can find out then maybe you know they they share uh, yeah it's happening like this because um, i or i'm afflicted by demon spirits i'm always getting these voices in my head but as you talk to the person you may recognize there is an issue let's say unforgiveness this person is not forgiving others right so then when you recognize that you can deal with the issue then you can say oh okay brother you know you need to kind of lead them and say look uh, because you're not submitting you know to god in this area or how about you just forgive them you can be very gentle put it in a nice way so that they are willing to accept it so we un we identify open doors we identify entry points sometimes they may say these habits you know i am a believer but i still and maybe they share some addictive habit i have this habit i'm not able to let it go and i won't stop this habit and you can guide them you can tell them look because you're engaged in this habit these demons have access into your life you have to get rid of it so all these things we can identify when we um talk to them okay do something like a little bit of an interview uh, to know all these things and while doing it also ensure the demons are in subjection so otherwise the person will get hurt that is our concern um now once we identify then the step 7 is we lead them in closing these doors usually when we find that usually what happens we go straight looking at the ministry of jesus and the apostles we'll go and we'll command you demon come out in the name of jesus we command but because of all this you know entry points uh, dedications and all that believers sometimes we struggle demon is not coming out demon is very stubborn it's taking many hours then we think what is this mark 16 jesus said dinion in my name you will cast out demons demon is not coming out you know in my experience demons are not coming out because we are not doing it the right way so ideally it should be one step we command and it comes out but in practice these all all these things are applicable okay so the best thing is take it step by step as i said talk to the person counsel the person convince the person 
get them to believe in Jesus, talk to them, identify the entry point. Next is lead them to close those entry points. So when we do that, you will be amazed how quickly the demons leave. Why? Why do you think that happens once you have closed the door? Yeah, so it's something like legal access. They don't have legal access if you close the entry point. You got it? So that legal access is broken uh, and they cannot demand to come in again. So that is the reason entry point is very, very key. You break that uh, dedication or sacrifice or anything like that. So how to close? Yes, yes, OK. Yeah, sure. Mm. She is? Demon possessed. OK. The... So what happened? Mm. He was praying and praying. Okay. And uh, he's telling, like, in the name of Jesus, come out. In the name of Jesus, go. But mm. nothing is happening. So he was pastor. And uh, he did a study because BTS did a study. So I think he knows very well about uh, like we are studying. So mm. he knows. So mm. he's not able to cast out demon. Okay. But after one person, he was a believer. So he went and he prayed. Okay. And he cast out demon. Okay. So why person not? <laughs> okay. See, there are many factors, uh, Nikhil. Faith, remember we said earlier, Believer's authority, how we need to have faith. Uh, and uh, this is like that same uh, Matthew 17 incident, right? Disciples are not able to cast out. Jesus is able to cast Why? They ask him. They say, Jesus says, cannot come out by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting will help your faith. So that also is there. Ma'am, mm. I think because he's pastor, he's uh, doing ministry on only on faith. <laughs> no, see, I... <laughs> Frankly, I would not consider it as a failure at all because everything is a learning experience. Now, just because, let's say, I'm a pastor and we are praying for somebody. Now, you may have all this knowledge or maybe the gift of discerning of spirits is operating in you in that moment. So you pick it up faster than me. Okay. And your command sets that person free. There are many things, a lot of dynamics are there. So let's, because I didn't command and a new believer commanded, I won't think, Are I failed, what pastor I am, you know. This, this person did it, I couldn't do it. It's a learning experience. I will ask the question, why couldn't I do it? The way the disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we do it? You ask God, God, why couldn't I do it? What went wrong? So maybe in that moment, I realize I should have desired the manifestation of the discerning of spirits. So next time when I'm doing, I will desire. Then that gift will manifest. You understand? So it can happen. Even if somebody is a pastor or something, it may or may not work, but at least we can try to learn from the experience, is what I'm saying. OK? So that, that is how we should develop ourselves as ministers of God. Now, the audience, people who are looking at us, they may judge us and say, oh, look at him. What is this? Let them judge. It's OK. OK? So I'm saying this because it can happen to any of us. Right? But you make everything a learning experience and try better next time. Uh, so yes, it can happen. Uh, it can be because of faith. It can be because of discerning. It can be because of some command you know, which was not issued in the right way. So there are a lot of reasons why uh, it can fail. OK, so we are at closing doors. OK, so how to close doors? Uh, we can say, if they are in unforgiveness, we can say, OK, shall we pray together? Will you release forgiveness? Then they agree, and you pray. 
release forgiveness immediately the door gets shut or they are in let's say some kind of a sin then you ask them to repent together we pray heavenly father i repent of this habit i repent of this attitude i repent of this sin in the name of jesus please forgive me they have to speak it okay? they have to speak it out aloud then once they have done this they can also we use the word renounce renounce is you are rejecting any association with demon spirits and you say now that you have forgiven me god like i renounce any association with you can name the spirits the spirits of lust which have been operating in me the spirits of jealousy that have been operating in me the familiar spirit which has been operate so why do you have to say it loudly why do you have to say that if you if you say it quietly within yourself then there's less authority there is authority if i speak it within myself loudly okay so here's the point demons cannot read our mind did you get it demons cannot read our mind which is why whenever we are speaking to demons you have to speak loudly got it so if i'm commanding a demon i have to speak aloud if i'm renouncing any commitments allegiances um you know things like that any sort of a dedication i would speak aloud to say that i am breaking this in the name of jesus you have no hold over me in the name of jesus i have to make it clear that is the reason you have to say it loudly got it ask them to pray aloud to do these things maybe they have made some vows or some pacts remember i was sharing how sometimes we say oh i'm always going to be sick uh, or uh, i can never do this or do that what have you done you have just made a you know a form of commitment which is not aligned to god's word god's purpose god's plan and it gives entry to some form of demonic activity or influence maybe fear maybe uh, you know uh, anxiety but why is it happening the person themselves has made a commitment or if you go into stronger things there are vows people make isn't it the i i will never get married something like that so when you made people make all these commitments i will i will not do this or i will um you know i will hurt my body in this way all these are open doors for the devil and a person who has made it has to break it so we are helping them break it you pray with them and you say say it with me say it with me first lead them in repentance ask god for forgiveness then say with me you spirits you know i i have no association with you i break that dedication which was made um you know and just go ahead say it renounce we use the word renounce you have to do that when you do that only then it becomes easier for us to do go to the final steps the demon can legally be asked to wake it after this step okay so just give me a few more minutes today i know we're already uh, at the end of the class session eight is so when you have finished all this you can cast out the unclean spirits okay? now that the doors are closed what is the advantage of casting them out now yeah they don't have access now they they just if only if you give them a room they can stay but when you shut the door there is no room they have to leave so at this point we usually use the word command okay you don't say can you come out or please can you come out you don't have to you just command okay like how pastor was saying how do you 
like if you find a street dog that's chasing you, you say, shoot, stop, right? So you just use your authority and say, come out in the name of Jesus. Huh? Rebuke. Yeah, we should rebuke. Correct. You rebuke in the name of Jesus. And that way, the demon will come out. Now, even now, if it's not coming out, you're missing the previous steps. You didn't close the right door. You have to keep going back and checking. Are there something is still open. Why is this person not? Or maybe I need to pray more. It's OK to say, um, how about we close today? Let's pray. Close the session. Ask them to come back next week. You go fasting. You go reading the Bible. And you know, you build yourself up some more. Come back next week. Minister. It's fine. Don't let anybody judge you for all this. Because we are also learning. What is our goal? This person has to be free. Right? So think like that. And you minister to the person. Um, and in the end, once the demon spirit has come out, we can lead the person in a prayer of uh, praise and thanksgiving. Now, some people also say, you ask them to confess the Lord Jesus. A demon will not confess. But you know, sometimes demons can lie also. They'll confess and get away with it. So that also can happen. Uh, but yeah, you really need to be working with the Holy Spirit to determine all these things. But once you are sure that the Spirit has left, then you, together with them, <coughs> praise God, thank God. Maybe you want to sing a song or, you know, they may only need to worship. Many times they'll be crying. They'll be so free after, the, after all the torment, right? They'll be so relieved that the demon left. They'll only be worshipping God automatically. So that also happens. So just pray with them. Praise, thanksgiving to God. And 10 is ask the Holy Spirit to fill them. Uh, now what we'll do is we will take up the post-ministry suggestions in the next session. And uh, let me see if I can cover some of the other topics also in a brief way. If possible, then we'll do only one more class. If not, we'll do only two classes. But we'll be done. All right? OK, any questions, any thoughts? You have to practice. Huh? Practice, practical, you need no. So what I do is I just pray. And I say, Lord, please help me. Now that I've learned this, help me to minister to somebody. So just pray for opportunities. I'm sure you know, you'll come across someone that you can uh, bless. Come. OK, anyway, let's just pray and close. Uh, would somebody like to lead in prayer? Father, we thank you so much for this day, for this time, Lord. And Father, we are so thankful, Lord Jesus, because of you we saw this time, Lord. And uh, everything you provided us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, what we learn today, uh, give us knowledge, understanding, wisdom, then we can understand your word and we can apply, Lord Jesus. And we can do practic practical things, Lord Jesus. And we, ca we can able to cast out demons, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much for everything, Lord Jesus. You have given us everything, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. I surrender each one of you in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, everyone. And um, yeah, have a blessed day. We shall connect in the next class. Bye for now.